can literally read a book every single day. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nay. If you're new, thank you so much for watching and clicking on this video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys 10 ways in which you can create a reading habit. Reading is a skill, so it requires time and effort in order to strengthen that practice. Most CEOs and executives read four to five books a month, and these are people who are extremely busy and they don't really have time to read. I get asked a lot how I read so many books in such a short amount of time and I want to share with you guys these 10 ways so that you can create a habit and read every single day. I think reading is extremely beneficial. It increases your focus, your memory, your attention span. It increases your knowledge and knowledge is power. You become more informed and educated and most importantly it shifts your perspective of the world and how you view it. You kind of dive into these authors minds and create a whole new perspective on life and it's just so extremely important. The amount of learning that you get from books is just so substantial. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys the optimal time and place that you can be reading, ways that you can create this habit for yourself, creative reading strategies in order to read more books in a shorter amount of time without the use of skimming because I really don't believe in skimming at all. I think that is so not good. So the first tip that I have for you guys is to set a time in your schedule to read. You want to aim at reading 20 to 30 minutes a day, which is about a chapter or two, or 10 to 20 pages per day. If you read 15 pages a day, that's 105 pages a week and 420 pages per month. That could be two books down in a month, which is not bad at all. And that's the minimum, like 15 pages is not that hard to do. You want to come up with a time that's most convenient for you. Is it in the morning? Is it at night? Is it on your lunch break, during your commute time. You can get creative and listen to audiobooks while you're working out, cooking, cleaning, like the list goes on. Another creative way that you can kind of sneak your reading in is reading during commercial breaks if you do watch a lot of TV. So personally, I like to read a chapter of my self-help book in the mornings and then a chapter of my more fiction style books at night. That has really worked for me and I read about two to three books per month. It doesn't really feel like I'm reading that many books just because I am reading at a slower pace and it's just incorporated into my routine so it doesn't feel like I have to read every single day. It just kind of feels like part of my daily routine. It's not something that I challenge myself to do. It comes very easily to me now just because I do schedule it every morning and every single night. So the second tip that I have for you guys is to create a seasonal reading list for yourself. Ever since I did this, it makes me want to read and looking up more books and kind of theming books around the season. So I started this in the summertime. I started doing seasonal book reading lists for you guys. And I also have a fall reading list which will be coming out the 31st of August which is next Friday. So definitely look out for that. But in the meantime you can go check out my summer reading list. I will leave it on the screen. Creating a seasonal reading list just so fun. I love anything with themes and kind of like grouping things together. It kind of becomes almost a challenge for me to find creative books for the season. You know fall time I'll, I'll read more kind of darker scary books. In the summertime I'll read more you know romantic style upbeat books it's just fun for me and I really like the challenge it creates for myself and I love coming up with the list for the next season it's just something that I really enjoy doing this every single season it kind of gets me pumped and ready to read more books so the third tip that I have is in relation to money if you feel that reading and buying books is super super expensive it can be I totally understand that but there's no excuse that you can't use your local library. When I was in college, before I had, you know, a set full-time job, I was a full-time student. I would go to the local library, not even the library in my college, but the local library of my community, and I would put books on hold. I would go there every single Saturday. I got a library card. Anytime that I wanted to read a more popular book, I would go and make sure that I was on the waiting list. And then also having that time frame of how long I could hold the book and how many people were on the waiting list almost made me want to read it more just because I was on a time frame and it was like selfish of me if I just kept it for months on end because I know what it felt like to be on the waiting list. So there's 
no excuse if you don't have money to actually go physically buy the books or the audiobooks. A local library is a really good option for you. Take advantage of it, you know. The libraries are there for a reason and they're so, so beneficial. Even if you have kids and stuff, like I think using the local library is a really great option. So the fourth tip that I have is to find creative ways to get your daily reading in. A creative way that you can get your reading done is through audiobooks. There are some on YouTube. There's like audiobook apps. You can listen to them while you're doing stuff. So you're kind of like knocking two birds with one stone. You are, you know, cleaning or cooking or driving or working out, but at the same time you're incorporating your reading and you're just listening to it rather than actually physically reading the book, which is a good option if you really just are short on time. Another option is an app called Blinkist and a subscriber actually just told me about this yesterday. They're actually sponsoring this video. It takes nonfiction books and kind of summarizes them down into 15 minutes worth of either reading or listening and it's a really good way to summarize the book for you and instead of skimming through books, skimming through books is not something that I personally like to do just because you're missing a lot of valuable information. Reading is similar to putting food in your body. If you are eating at a fast pace your body won't be able to digest the food properly and get all the nutrients and vitamins that it's supposed to be getting out of this food and the same goes with reading. If you're just skimming through and trying your best just to finish the book and not getting any information your mind is not going to be able to digest it properly and you're not going to be getting anything from the book. So you just wasted your time, energy, and money if you bought the book. So Blinkist is a really good option if you want the information quick and fast but at the same time you don't want to just sit there and like not be able to digest the information properly. It does all of the hard work for you. It summarizes and condenses all of the information that taken from the book into a quick 15 minutes. You can literally read a book every single day. You're not investing your time but you're gaining all the information as if you've invested all of your time into reading these books. They provided a link that I will leave in the description box and the first hundred people to use that link will get unlimited access for a week on Blinkist which is so beneficial so definitely get that before someone else snags it up. And they're also giving you guys 20% off a full membership which you can cancel at any time. They have so many different nonfiction books which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. So the ones that I recommend is a four hour work week. I actually read this book two years ago and I really liked the information that I got from it but at the same time I hated reading the book. I felt like a lot of it was very repetitive so that's a really good one to start with because I really don't recommend reading that whole book. You can literally get the information within 15 minutes which Blinkist does for you. So I recommend that one and then they have two other books that are actually on my to read list and one of them is the seven habits of highly effective people and also how to win friends and influence people. Those two books are very very, very well known and a lot of people love them. They're really highly rated. So if you do try out Blinkist, try one of those three books and let me know which ones you end up picking. Another creative way that you can get your reading done is if you're a parent, read to your child. Make it kind of a fun way to incorporate reading into your routine. So the fifth way that you can create a reading habit is to join a book club. There are so many different platforms out there that you can join. I actually created our book club here last summer when I created my summer reading list. A lot of you guys talk to me on Instagram about the books. I do want to kind of create a more solid platform to talk about this. The only thing is I just don't want people to accidentally give spoilers away. So there are book clubs in which you can read and read along with. Oprah has a book club. I know that there's book clubs locally in your community. Churches have book clubs. There's so many online communities that you can join. Just look up on Google, you know, book clubs in my area are online communities for book clubs. You can talk about it and you know they give you questions about the book. You are kind of held accountable just because you are going to meetings and talking about the books every day. Discussing the reading that you've already done actually helps you be more engaged in the reading and gain that knowledge and hold on to that information more. If you watch The Bachelor, every single finale is such a huge thing. It's on the news, it's on Jimmy Fallon, it's online, it's on social media, it's literally everywhere. So people make it a point to watch the finale when it comes on so they won't spoil the ending for them whether they see it on the news or social media so it kind of holds you accountable in the same aspect for a book club because you don't want to go to a book club and have them talk about the chapter that you haven't even read yet so it makes you almost 
want to read it so that you can, you know, be a part of that discussion and that community. The sixth tip that I have for you guys is to create an environment and a space in which you can read with no distractions. Create a little reading nook for yourself. The key word here is yourself. You don't want to do what's best for other people. You want to read what's best to you. It may look fancy and cute to read in a coffee shop, but if you get distracted easily by noises and people talking, coffee shops might not be the best option for you. You can read on your bed, in your bathtub, in a coffee shop, at a school, underneath a tree in a park. I personally love reading on my patio outside. You want to eliminate all distractions and feel comfortable where you're reading so that your mind won't drift off and you can get everything that you need from the book. So the seventh thing that I have for you guys is to limit your TV and internet usage. People say, I don't have time to do this, I don't have time to do that, and they make up excuses for themselves, but they sit there and watch so much TV or they go on the internet so many different times throughout the day. If you limit yourself to a certain amount of time to spend on the internet or TV, it will kind of create space for you to incorporate daily reading into your routine. So try, you know, weaning off a show or not going on social media so often or give yourself a time frame for your TV and for your social media and internet usage. That way you can have that empty time to read. It takes up a lot of time of your day and when you replace that by reading, you'll be surprised at how much time you have to actually read. And again, like I said, you can get creative. If you don't want to, you know, stop watching your TV shows, why don't you try reading on the commercials instead of skipping through the commercials? So the eighth tip that I have is to read books that you love. I do a ton of research and a book that might be popular might not be something that I am personally interested in. So for example, if you're interested in comic books or romance novels or fantasy novels or self-help books, you have to kind of find what works best for you and what you genuinely love to do. Because you can't sit there and read something that you don't like because then your mind will get bored and you'll start like mindlessly daydreaming and not really enjoying reading and it will become more of a chore rather than something that you actually look forward to every day. It's supposed to be fun and if it's not fun, you're not reading the right books. So I like to go on Goodreads and find which books are the highest rated. I like to go on the New York Times bestsellers list, you know, read the back of the books, read the table of contents, kind of see what I'm getting myself into before I actually buy the book and invest my time in reading the book. And sometimes people don't like to quit, so they'll start reading a book but they don't like it and it'll take them months to read a book because they don't like it. It's okay to not finish reading a book. We've all been there. Instead of wasting your time telling yourself I just don't want to quit why don't you just quit reading the book that you don't like and pick up a book that you do enjoy that way you can read more books because you're reading more because you actually enjoy it so if you're into stuff like 50 shades of gray read 50 shades of gray you want it to be challenging when you're reading but not too challenging so if you're sitting there reading you know Moby Dick or something and you're just like not understanding or you're not connecting with the book that's totally okay find something that you are interested in so your mind isn't wandering off and you're actually getting something from the book you're reading. What is your interest? Do you like those romance books? Do you like mystery? Do you like anthropology or psychology? Do you like creepy scary books, murder mysteries? Like find your style of book and focus on that and read reviews and look at the top rated books of that genre. It's kind of like trial and error. You have to find the books that you genuinely love reading. So the ninth tip that I have for you guys is to create a habit tracker. It takes 21 days to create a habit for yourself. So when you sit there and actually track your habit that you want to be developing, not only does it promote success, but it creates personal accountability, which gets you motivated to do it every day. Writing it down and seeing it, it's not only fun, but it becomes more achievable because it becomes more realistic. You're kind of holding yourself accountable for these habits. You can do it bullet journal style. I used to do habit trackers when I did bullet journaling. It's just kind of on a piece of paper and you can create the habits that you want and check them off every single day that you did them. You can do that just for reading if you want. You can also go on Goodreads. So Goodreads is a website and an app that I use to track my reading. You can, you know, communicate with the community, read reviews, rate books, all of that stuff is really great and fun, but I really like it for statistic purposes. It tells you how many days you read. So you can also track your progress. You can say what page you're on. 
every book that you read for the year, they track the length of the books, the most popular book you read, the least popular book you read, the longest, the shortest, how many pages you read for the year, like the list goes on. It's just really fun to kind of see all of your reading into more of like a journey style. And it's really fun to watch and see the statistics rise. It's just a really fun way to not only get involved with a reading community, but track your progress. And the 10th and final tip is the optimal time to read. So I did a little bit of research on this one and I wanted to find out when the best time it was to read. And the best time to read is in the morning after your workout. So in the morning, because you have fewer distractions than at nighttime and you haven't gone throughout your day yet, so your mind is not as consumed with everyday activity and it becomes less distracted. After a workout, your brain releases endorphins, which is a neurotransmitter, which is your learning peak time. This is when you are the most focused and you will get the most out of what you're reading. So especially if you're reading something to learn, the morning after a workout is the most optimal time to read. So that is it for this video. If you guys want to watch my fall reading list, it will be live next Friday on the 31st. So definitely check that out. If you guys liked this video, definitely please give it a thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you guys all in a future video. Bye guys. Um.